So what we're going to do is work through the five-step process of process accounting using a variety of different examples. So we'll start with like, uh, step one and we'll move to step two and step three on, on so forth and so on. So the first problem that we have here says Babson Soda Bottling Department had 19,000 units in beginning inventory work in process on September 1st. During September, 100,000 units were started into production. On September 30th, 29,000 units were left in ending inventory work in process. Summarize the physical flow. So I've got a schedule started here with the information that we've been given. Beginning work in process units, 19,000 started into production, 100,000. We also know that um, 29,000 units left in ending work in process. So let's take a look here and see what we need to do. So we need to determine the total units to account for right here. So if we just add those two together, our beginning work in process plus the units started into production, that will tell us that we have 119,000 units that we need to account for. Okay, so we can fill this in as well. It's kind of like your balance sheet. Those two need to balance. So total physical units to be accounted for, total physical units to be accounted for. Those are the exact same. What we don't know at this point are the number of units completed and transferred out during September. But we do know the ending work in process that was transferred out or that were left in ending work in process. So all we need to do is take the 119,000, subtract the 29,000 ending work in process, and that will tell us that 90,000 units were completed and transferred out during the month. That's all we need to know for, for this particular problem. Okay, let's take a look at step two is to compute an output in terms of equivalent units. This is usually the part that students struggle with the most. So the frying department of crinkled chips had 110,000 partially completed units in work in process at the end of March. All of the direct materials have been added to these units but the units were only 68% of the way through with the conversion process. In addition, 1,200,000 units had been completed and transferred out of the frying department to the packaging department during the month. So number one, how many equivalent units of direct materials and equivalent units of conversion costs are associated with the 1,200,000 units completed and transferred out? Then compute the equivalent units of direct materials and the equivalent units of conversion costs associated with the 110 thousand partially completed units still in ending work in process and then what are the total equivalent units okay so again I've gone ahead and brought in a schedule make things a little bit cleaner a little bit faster so what we know is this information what was completed and transferred out a million two there's a hundred and ten thousand still in ending work in process which means we have one million three hundred and ten thousand units to account for now the units that were completed and transferred out obviously were 100% complete. So if they're 100% complete, that means that the equivalent units are 100% of the million two. So um, we will have a million two hundred thousand for both conversion and direct material costs for the units that were completed and transferred out. Now ending work in process, this gets a little bit more complicated because it says all of the direct materials have been added to these units, but the units were only 68% through the conversion process. So this tells me that they're 100% complete with respect to direct materials. So if we take 100% of 110,000, we'll get 110,000. Now the conversion costs, as we mentioned, are only 68% complete. So we'll take that 110, multiply it times the 68%, and what we come up with is 74,800. Okay, so that means that we have 74,800 equivalent units. That's equivalent to 110,000 units that are only 68% complete. Now all we have to do is add those two together so we get a million three hundred. Oh, let's see, I'm going to write that down on the bottom line just to make it a little bit more accurate. So 1, 3, 10 will be our total equivalent units. And if we add these two together, we get 1,274,800. And that's the answer to the question. 
So step three is to summarize the total cost to account for. Here's a new problem. McIntyre Company's work in process inventory had a 68,000 beginning balance on May 1st. 43,000 of this related to direct materials used during April, while 25,000 related to conversion costs incurred during April. During May, the following costs were incurred during the department. So we've got direct materials used, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Summarize the department's total cost to account for and prepare a schedule that summarizes these costs. Okay, so we've got a, a sample schedule here. What we want to know is our beginning work in process, costs added, and then total cost to be accounted for. Well, beginning work in process is given to us. We've got 43,000 direct materials, 25,000 conversion costs. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And then all we need to do is add those two together and that will give us 68,000 total. Now costs are added during May and we're giving a couple of different costs here. So we are given the direct materials cost, great, direct labor and manufacturing overhead. Now remember, these two added together, direct labor and manufacturing overhead are our conversion costs. So we'll have to add those together when we carry them down. Otherwise, we know 103,000 in direct materials was added during the month, and 162,000, once we add those two together, were our conversion costs. Again, now we can add these two together, total cost 265. And then it's just a matter of adding all these columns downward. So 43,000 plus one four, I'm sorry, 43,000 plus 103,000 is 146,000. In direct materials, 187,000, it will be conversion costs for a total of 333,000 for um, total cost. Okay, let's take a look at the next problem here. So at the end of August, uh, a company's mixing department had total costs to account for of 728,607. Of that amount, 255,927 related to direct materials costs while the remainder related to conversion costs. The department had 52,230 total equivalent units of direct materials, 45,450 total equivalent units of conversion costs for the month. So compute the cost per equivalent unit for direct materials and the cost per equivalent unit for um, conversion costs. Now remember in step four we're computing the cost per equivalent unit and that formula is the cost for the period divided by the equivalent units of production for the period. So we know direct materials cost we were given as 200 and 55,927. We were also told that the equivalent units of direct materials was 52,500. So we can go ahead and write those in. 255,927, 52,230, and again we're going to divide those and we get a cost per equivalent unit of 490. Now they didn't tell us exactly what our conversion costs were. We have to do a little calculating here because they said that total costs were 728,607 and 255,927 were direct materials. So we'll have to do a little math here and see that 728,607 minus 255,927 is 472. 680. So the costs associated with the conversion costs were 972,680. They did, however, give us the total equivalent units of 45,450. So again, we just take that, divide it by that, and we get $10.40. Okay, last step, step five is to assign the total cost to units completed and units in ending work in process inventory. So in this case we've got Tristan Company produces its product using a single production process. For the month of August the company has determined its cost per equivalent unit as follows. So this is what we would have done in step four to determine that. During the month Tristan completed and transferred out 410,000 units of finished goods at month end, 86,000 partially completed units remained in ending work in process inventory. 
and these partially completed units were equal to 69,000 equivalent units of direct materials and 50,000 equivalent units of conversion costs. So it asks us to determine the total cost that should be assigned to the following. Units completed and transferred out. Well, you can see here I have already plugged in the answers because it would be a little messy for me to write them in. But let's walk through them anyway so you know how the numbers came to be. So units completed and transferred out. Well, it told us that 410,000 units were finished at the end of the month. So we're going to take that 410 and multiply it by our direct materials cost and our conversion costs, which you can see here. So 410 um, multiplied by our direct materials cost plus our conversion cost gives us 2,849,500. Now we need to do essentially the same for our units in ending work in process inventory. So we were told that 69,000 units were in direct materials and 50,000 were conversion costs. So let me just back up one second. Let's take those 69,000 in equivalent direct materials and multiply that times the 420, which is what we've got down here. And then we're going to add to that the 50,000 equivalent units of conversion costs and multiply that times the 275. If we add those two together then we get 427.3. That's the cost that should be assigned to our ending work in process inventory. Now it's pretty simple from this point forward. We would just take these two, add them together, and as you can see that gives us 3,276,800. And then the average cost of making one unit, well, we just add our direct materials cost and our conversion cost together, and we get $6.95. Thank you.